In this video, we're going to take a look at polyprotic acid strong base titrations. One thing I want to emphasize from the outset is that many of the ideas that we've already seen for monoprotic weak acid strong base titrations are going to apply here. And for polyprotic bases that can be protonated multiple times, many of the same ideas that we saw in the weak base strong acid titration section are also going to apply here. So we can almost take this titration curve right here, which we know is polyprotic because we can identify multiple equivalence points on the curve, and divide it up into two sections. One section for the first quote-unquote titration, and a second half for the second quote-unquote titration, and identify the two equivalence points as the locations of the steepest points on the curve. It's also important to appreciate here that deprotonation of a diprotic acid does not happen in one fell swoop via two equivalents of hydroxide. In other words, we don't go right from H2A to A2- minus and two waters, right? This doesn't occur this way. Deprotonation happens in a stepwise process. We see that, and actually the titration curve is great evidence for that. We can see that right in the titration curve the blue portion of the titration curve looks exactly like a monoprotic acid titration. And because the Ka's of these two protons in H2A are so far separated, for all intents and purposes, it kind of just is a monoprotic acid titration, where the reaction that's going on is the removal of a single proton to form HA- and water. This is the titration reaction. And the key equilibrium that, for example, is relevant in the buffer region here, this blue buffer region, is the single acid dissociation of H2A. That is the reaction of H2A with water to form the conjugate base HA-, minus, not A2-, minus, but HA-, minus, and hydronium, H3O+. Plus. As we've seen in class, at the point where the volume of titrant added is halfway to the volume added at the equivalence point, somewhere about here, near the middle of the buffer region, the pH at that point is going to be equal to the pKa of the acid, and in particular for a polyprotic acid, pKa1, the first pKa. At that point on the curve, I'll call it C, the reason this works is largely thanks to the henderson hasselbalch equation. Throughout the buffer region, pH is equal to the pKa of that acid involved in the buffer, in other words, the pKa of H2A here, right, or pKa1, plus the log of the ratio of conjugate base to acid concentration, but of course, halfway to the first equivalence point, the concentrations of A- and HA are equal because we've consumed half of the HA present initially, and so we have half of the HA left and half of that A- produced. This divides out to 1, the whole term drops out as 0, and we end up with pH equals pKa1. Once we get to the point where the curve starts leveling off Again, the first titration is essentially done, and so at, at this point, the concentration of H2A is basically zero. It's so small that it's negligible. And we can now transition from thinking about a titration of H2A that produces HA- minus as we add base in the blue section to a titration of the conjugate base now, HA-, minus, which still has a proton left and can form A2- minus as additional base is added. At the second equivalence point, we've added enough hydroxide to consume all of the HA- to form A2- completely. And although I haven't done a great job of drawing this, because the total amount of polyprotic acid hasn't changed over the course of this titration since the analyte beaker has just been sitting there, we haven't added any additional acid to it, right? The volume required to reach the first equivalence point times 2 equals the volume required to reach the second equivalence point. And furthermore, to identify pKa2, we actually have to look halfway between the first and second equivalence points. In other words, right about here, this is where the pH of the solution is equal to pKa2. Because at the first equivalence point, we started with essentially all HA-. And halfway between this blue point and the second equivalence point, this red point, where we have all A2-, minus, essentially, here we're going to have equal concentrations of HA- minus and A2-, minus, 
leading to a situation, thanks again to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation where now we're using pKa2, the pH is equal to pKa2. Out beyond that second equivalence point, we're just piling on more hydroxide and tangentially approaching the pH of the titrant. One thing that I want to back up and, and mention briefly is that in this region that looks like a second buffer region, which it, it absolutely is, let's call it B2 for the second buffer region, in the B2 region we're dealing with a buffer but now the reaction is different. We're talking about acid dissociation of the second proton, if you like, acid dissociation of the conjugate base to form still hydronium but now a2 minus, the conjugate base of HA minus.